Okay, well, I got this far for today. Um, the welds are okay. Um, put the legs on and basically cut them down to height. I am going to put these casters with locks on them uh, via a plate. Um, we're just going to have a nut, first of all, a hole drilled through it and then a nut welded onto the plate. And then these will become adjustable feet. They can go up inside the bottom of the feet. And there's, of course, a lower um, frame to go in as well for a shelf, which will hold the, the, uh, the bucket. And hopefully the plasma cutter, uh, the, yeah, the plasma cutter itself, the, the, the actual unit. Um, plus these guys here will just uh, enable me to wrap up the cable. And these guys here are handles. So, yeah. So I think for today, not bad. I think that that's pretty good effort. Looking forward to getting this done. I'm actually really looking forward to uh, building the uh, little outrigger, which will have the droid, the arc droid on it. Well, <clears throat> I'm starting off today with um, the wheels, which I've drilled a plate, and I'm about to just quickly TIG weld the uh, a nut on here so it's captive, and then I'll weld this plate to the bottom of the, uh, of the table. Okay, well I hit the, I welded the nuts onto the plates and then I've um, given a bit of a wire brushing down and now I've hit them with some oxide just to make sure that they don't rust inside the uh, tube once I weld them onto the both base of these. Okay, freshly minted out of the spray booth, not, <laughs> more like the great outdoors. Um, yeah, just uh, quickly gave it a squirt of um, rust oleum um, with uh, the red oxide underneath it and um, yeah, I think it's come up okay it's look it's no no yeah I'm not an expert at making any of this but I think it looks pretty good so once it's dried enough I'm going to flip it on its on its correct on its wheels and then uh, paint the top area as well before finishing off tonight but I'm pretty happy with that that will make a really great base for the plasma table Okay, it's not the final coat, I've got to do another coat, but um, yeah, look at that. Um, there's the plasma table pretty much complete. It just needs the little side rig table built now, which will have the arc droid on it. And yeah, I'm in business, I think. Very happy, perfect height for the um, table. I'm really, really happy that's a really good height. And I think that will fit in my shed once I rearrange a few things here to um, keep it here permanently, but uh, the Arctroid will just come in and out as needed. So, I'm finally added the, the handles, uh, which are welded on and painted now. And I've also got the, wire, the cable sort of management that I've got here and the shelf down below, and it's all been painted, uh, ready for, I guess, the final stage, which is to make the table which holds the droid the arc droid on it and uh, of course the 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 tabletop itself is already cut and ready to go just I'll put that in once it's dried and then the final thing is just this shroud which will direct the sparks and everything into a steel bucket below and I think the cart is sort of very close to being done the shroud might take me some time though it's quite complicated and I haven't done this kind of sheet metal work before so anyway it's a it's a challenge Well, almost done. I've built a shroud to basically direct sparks and things into this steel bucket below, which is just easily removable. It's underneath. We need to. We can put water in it to you know, quench any sparks and things. And um, the actual plasma cutter, which is a Razor Cut 45, sits under there. Um, I'll also be attaching an air filter at the back there to. Um, to the actual frame of the cart and then the last thing that I need to do is just hook up a there's a wire hanger just to help hold the plasma uh, torch cable which goes to the torch and obviously back down to the uh, to the head unit there um, but overall I think I've got all the features I want this I'm gonna 
always pack away, so it'll come off. I'll have, I'll have a couple of indexing pin, pins that I'll be able to locate it on. And um, the Arctroid itself has full range across the, the table here and can get all the way over to the sides. And so this is sort of the max cutting area as well. So uh, this table has been built specifically with the dimensions of the Arctroid uh, in mind. So I'm hoping that uh, it's going to work out really well. I can't wait to actually fire this thing up and actually get it producing something rather than me just making the actual tool itself. Um, anyway, I'm very happy with that. Um, looking forward to barking it up tomorrow. Well, I've run the uh, calibration on the Arctroid, which is a fairly complicated affair. You've got to set this up and clamp it down at this end, which I did do, and I ran the stylus over these points, which then works out the math to know where the plasma torch is going to be, and you, you sort of repeat that process with the torch on as well. So once that's done, um, yeah, I can run a program. So I've actually loaded up something I made um, in Inkscape, and we can hit run, and you can watch it begin its thing. So off it goes, it's starting to uh, cut holes. You can see that there it is, the little green. Now it's moving down to the next circle. It's cutting that circle out, which is just a hole. And then it moves along to here, cuts out the, the final hole, and then starts doing all of the, the, word, the words, which is tomato, cutting out the letters, leaving a stenciled sign behind. So, yeah, it's quite, a, quite fun watching it uh, operate. And now it's just a matter of um, waiting for Danny to come and bring us the, uh, the power so we can run the, both the plasma torch and the compressor at the same time, which is somewhat of an issue here in this garage at the moment until he does, fixes that problem. Right, I'm doing yet more testing with the, the Arctroid. And this morning I've just come up with a design to um, make a simple sign called cherry tomatoes and it's got like a tab at the bottom which I can weld a stick to it um, so it's a really simple thing I'm just gonna hit uh, run and the arc droid without the plasma cutter working of course no plasma cutter even attached so that's what's hanging here um, is just gonna go through the motions of cutting out the letters so this is using a font which I've just recently purchased um, and basically what it is, is a font with, um, I guess, land bridges for letters that would obviously not work very well unless it had little land bridges to connect things like the O and A and things would fall out if they didn't have them. Um, this font actually has all the land bridges inbuilt and it's essentially, it's essentially a stencil font used by the military for that very purpose. And yeah, so there it is, it's cutting out the letters, and um, the scale of it might be still a bit too small, we'll see. Um, we'll figure it out once I actually cut some metal. Uh, but for, for now, the order is correct. It's sort of doing all the letters first, and then it cuts out the final shape afterwards, which is fantastic. Well, there's the finished article, at least uh, after it's been um, cleaned up with uh, just a flapper, flapper disc on, on the grinder there. And um, now I'm just going to weld a just a bit of uh, mild steel rod on the bottom of it, and you've got yourself a sign. And here's the finished result after it's been cleaned up a little bit. I've given it a spray of um, just clear coat just to stop them from rusting. This is just mild steel, so they will eventually rust, but 
we've got the basil, we've got the broccoli, we've got the tomatoes, we've got more basil. Uh, there's a potato there, but it's uh, back to front at the moment. And um, yeah, and more basil over here as well. So I think um, you know my welding's nothing special, but as a little sign in the in the garden, <laughs> not bad. Well, today's little project is really to kick off a little bit of core 10 and uh, do some plasma cutting with core 10, learn a bit more about um, the slightly thicker material. This is 1.6 mil, and it's going to be a freestanding sign with uh, some help with some angled brackets welded to the back of these letters um, saying Golden Fleet, which will run along the top of the atrium or the, the roof there. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to uh, put it together later today. Well, I'm making a bit of a sign this morning and to complete the process of putting this thing together, I have to cut out some gussets, which I need to weld at the back of some lettering, which um, will help to hold it stiff. So I'm about to press go on the, uh, the go button. I'm gonna turn on the arc droid and hit run. Well, this, since this is a piece of core 10, this is a bit more expensive than your normal mild steel, but I've been able to really use just about every little square inch of this, and even the bits that are left over, I'm gonna cut out the plates and use them somewhere along the track. But uh, yeah, pretty happy that I could squeeze this much out of the one sheet. So my plan today is to try and weld up all the little gussets I just cut on the plasma cutter. I've got lots of them here, lots of letters. <laughs> Put the gussets on the back and where I can, I'll use two gussets on each letter, and where there's only room for one, like in this E, it's very difficult to get two, so I'm just going to put one in, and hopefully that's going to be enough. If not, I'll cut some shorter gussets to fit behind the, you know, make put two on the E. Um, and then finally, I'll weld all of these things to a flat bar, which has been pre-drilled with uh, and holes so I can mount it on the roof. Now, I'll use the angle iron to help hold the letters in place while I'm actually welding it on. I think that's gonna help get them on. But the first step is just to get the gussets on the back of the letters. That's what I'm up to now, so I'm gonna TIG weld them on. <laughs> hey, goodies. <laughs> all right, we've been working on these letters. We've got them all little filleted gussets on there. Uh, the gussets have been welded to the letters only in this stage and I'm about to weld the letters to the flat steel bar so that we can finally uh, put it up on the roof. Okay, well I've basically welded this together and I'm ready for, um, I guess a little bit of clean up. I've got to just take away some of the uh, welding marks on the front faces. But it's just been welded to a flat bit of bar, which has got some holes drilled in it so I can screw it to the roof. Um, and the gussets do the job of keeping it stiff and whatnot. So I think overall I'm pretty happy with the thing, even though my welds aren't something beautiful. There are three points of contact with each letter at least, and in some cases more. So I think, yeah, it should hold. Oh goodness me, it's taken me a little while just to uh, grind and weld and cut out the letters and put the gussets on, but hey, it's sort of done. It uh, just probably needs a final little touch up with the uh, flapper disc just to take, you know, smooth out any sort of bits on the front face. I want it to sort of rust evenly since it's core 10. And um, yeah, so I think if I just gently went over it with an 80 grit, it might rust a little bit more evenly. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'll stick it up on the roof here. It'll be situated up the top here. Well, new addition to the roof now. <laughs> we have the golden fleece sign. Um, I've polished most of it, just the 
the back end here, the golden, is not as done as that one. So I may need to revisit this to get it to rust as evenly since it's core 10. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing it weather a bit and kind of look the part. Um, if not, then we might paint it the same golden fleece yellow so that it stands out. But I think it'll stand out too much. I'd rather it sort of look a bit more rustic. But uh, yeah, nice. There we go, a very steampunkish looking rusty faceplate made on the plasma cutter table using the art droid. And um, these displays are very odd, they're, they're sort of you know, 1950s, 60s vintage um, displays called Nixie tubes. And what makes them really cool is they've got all the letters sort of, all the numbers uh, spelled out, so to speak, in wire, but stacked on top of each other. So they appear to be, have depth as they sort of go up the numbers. Um, and of course the red glow is just sort of very appealing in the glass tube. Um, yeah, I just love them. I think they look fantastic. So the idea is all of this schmozzle is kept in a box and uh, nicely wired uh, together so that it doesn't have all this sort of paraphernalia going. And of course the Arduino here is driving it. Um, but uh, yeah, you anyway, know, simple counter thing, some sort of Nixie tubey display, God knows what it's useful for, but it's just fun to look at.